The importance of gender in research is increasingly in the spotlight. But what does this mean for Horizon 2020 funded research? To begin with, we must distinguish between gender balance within research teams and the need to address gender aspects in the research itself. Under Horizon 2020, the European Commission is fostering equal opportunities within research teams and gender balance in the decision-making processes. This means that research and project management teams should be made up of a balanced number of women and men. The European Commission also hires experts of both sexes to ensure gender balance in its panels. Now let's focus on the integration of gender sex analysis in research itself. This is what we call the gender dimension in research and innovation content. Why should you be aware of it? Simply put, incorporating a gender aspect in research where relevant improves the scientific quality and societal relevance of the results. There's a lot of waste of time and resources because things are done in a wrong way. And that's due to, for example, gender-blind research in, in health sciences, in transport or in, in welfare. We have the male as the norm. We use him as a representative for the whole adult population. I think that these perspectives need to be broadened and this would be for the good, the common good and also advance the well-being of all of us. You have in your proposal to think about being creative, think alternatively. In the future, maybe we can find new uh, things are new issues to study because you dare to focus on something that has not been the tradition. Exploring the gender dimension offers a lot of potential, even in areas that may seem gender neutral at first sight, like transport or climate change. Did you know that cars were only tested on male crash test dummies, ignoring risks of injuries for women? Or that women were more vulnerable than men to the effects of climate change? because they constitute the majority of the world's poor and are more affected by the lack of natural resources. These examples show that sex and gender, both biological and socio-cultural considerations, can matter a lot. When considering the gender dimension, we must differentiate between gender and sex and take into account the way these two notions interact with each other. Gender dimension is the uh, umbrella name for both the, the social structure, gender and sex. There is a growing recognition that it's very hard to differentiate and say this is pure sex and this is pure uh, gender. There are lots of grey zones and perhaps one should also take uh, them into account. Recognizing how gender and sex influence culture and society is critical if we want research to be more effective. It is likely to require extra time and resources, but it's also a powerful way to question stereotypes and address the distinct needs of women and men. So, do you think the gender dimension is relevant and applicable to your research or not? Let's have a closer look at some examples. When it snows, the streets are ploughed so that people can get through. At first sight, you could think that this has nothing to do with gender. And yet, the community of Karlskoga in Sweden realized that this issue might not be gender neutral. A study showed that major roads for cars were cleared first, and only then, streets, bus stops, pedestrian walkways and bike paths. It was also shown that women walk, cycle and use public transport more often than men. In other words, the way the municipality cleared up the snow favoured car users and therefore had different effects on women and men. This was not intentional, of course. They were just doing things the way they've always been done. This led to a reconsideration of their snow-clearing approach. The municipality changed its priorities and started to clear pedestrian walkways and bike paths before roads. They also gave priority to schools and major employers before major roads. This new organization, more in line with people's daily schedules, made the city more accessible to everybody, including children, people with pushchairs, walkers and wheelchairs. And it didn't cost anything. The municipality just shifted the schedules around. The change actually benefited the city's economy by reducing the costs of injuries and accidents due to slippery conditions. 
Studies have shown that in many parts of the world, women and girls are in charge of washing, cooking, cleaning or fetching water. They often have to go miles to do these tasks. This is a burden that stops them doing other things, such as going to school. Improving education without also improving water infrastructure therefore tends to favour the education of boys. It's also been shown that many development projects run by international institutions failed because women were excluded from the decision-making process and their knowledge remained unused. Yet research projects that include a gender perspective and women proved successful. Why is this so? Simply because women can draw on their daily experience of using water, which is richer than that of men. They know the soils and their water yields are more aware of the physical burden of carrying water and the associated injuries and accidents. Projects in which women were trained to maintain infrastructures or in which they were included as advisors to engineers have made water sources more reliable and improved access to water for everyone. As a result, they have improved girls' school attendance and enabled adult women to take on activities that bring in money, helping to break the cycle of poverty. Now that you know what the gender dimension in research is, take a few minutes to consider how gender and sex could influence your research outcomes. Researchers should think of, uh, of uh, the gender dimension not as an emergency. As it is now, uh, research teams often you know, realize somewhere in, in the research process, oh, we need a, a gender dimension here because the European Union tells us to do that. I think they should, um, and th this is also what is uh, implied in the Horizon 2020, it should be included right from the beginning throughout the process of, uh, of uh, research and then also in the design of the end result. To all applicants who would like to consider gender in their project, um, I suggest that they try to really think how can they concretely contribute to the cause. Maybe go read and study the documents that the EU published and the UN and you find a great deal of information and inspiration there to actually make your contribution valuable and real. If you're applying for an MSCA grant or another Horizon 2020 project, think about how the gender dimension is relevant to your proposal, and if so, explain how. The gender dimension will be evaluated under the excellence criterion. Addressing sex and gender aspects will improve the quality of your research and could make a difference vis-a-vis -vis other applicants. By taking into account the gender dimension in your project, the knowledge your work will produce will be more relevant for society and ultimately lead to better science.